welcome to this UML tutorial. In my previous video I talked about UML use case diagrams. In this video I'm going to talk about use case diagram scenarios. So let me first start with a presentation. So like I said I'm going to talk about use case scenarios. So why use case scenarios? Well, if you remember the diagram, the use case diagram I showed in my previous video, you'll probably realize that it does not really contain enough information to accurately describe what each feature of the system does. As a matter of fact, the only thing that you know from a use case diagram is the name of the feature. You don't exactly know what steps are taken inside the feature or what exactly that feature means. And it's for that reason that every use case in a use case diagram needs to come accompanied with a use case scenario. So in this video, I'm going to describe a use case scenario based on the use case diagram from my previous video. So what I will will show is, I first of all, I will show the template for a scenario and then go and describe the basic steps of one of the use case in the use case diagram. Uh, one thing that should be noted is that a use case scenario essentially describes the interactions between the user and the system. So the user being the actor in the use case diagram and the use case being, well, the circle element or the little circle symbol in the use case diagram. So there are many different types of templates for a use case scenario. As a matter of fact, if you were to pick up uh, several books on UML or attend several courses, you will generally always see slightly different templates for use case scenarios. So the template you see here is the template that I like to use. Uh, this is by no means the most perfect template, but I feel it suffices uh, for me. Moreover, when I am going to do an exa the example in a moment, uh, please keep in mind that what I'm doing is my interpretation of the use case scenario. And why am I saying that is because, again, if you were to look at different books on UML, you will see different writers do it differently. Um, there is some common consensus on uh, what a use case scenario or, or should be like or diagram should be like, but still I see everybody's kind of going in a different direction. So, um, plus it, it is sort of inherent on the nature of designing because different people design things differently. So yes, p do please keep that in mind when watching the rest of this video. Um, so talking about the elements of the use case scenario. We have the use case name. We have the, so the, the name of the use case must reference uh, one of the use cases in your diagram. We have the author who wrote it uh, when the last revision was the uh, of the use case scenario because they will get periodically updated. As a matter of fact, it's really extremely hard to, to get it right the first time. As a matter of fact, I'm also always struggling a little bit with it. Um, so last revision, uh, the actors, which are the actors uh, who are interacting with that particular use case you're writing the scenario for. Uh, the uses, or so also known as includes, which uh, basically defines, indicates which other use cases this use case has a include relationship with. Same thing for extends, indicates uh, what use case they are extending, if any. The preconditions. Preconditions indicate uh, any type of condition that must be considered true or uh, must be met before this use case can successfully execute. Then we have the basic course and main scenario. So those are basically the steps as an interaction between user and system to accomplish the goal, which is the use case. Other scenarios are alternative paths. Then we have the uh, post conditions, which is the situation that applies after the use case is uh, done. And we have the error conditions, which talk about things that can go wrong. All right, so let's get started then on the actual use case example, uh, use case scenario example. In this case, uh, not going to do it in Eclipse with Papyrus. As a matter of fact, the only reason I have Eclipse open is to look at the use case diagram. Instead, I'm simply going to write it in Word. So the use case that I'm going to do is going to be the order meal uh, use case. So the name would be order meal. The author well have to be has to be your own name. So in this case, I'm just going to write John Doe. Uh, the last revision, well, any date, so 1 May 2015, for example. 
uh, the actors involved in uh, the use case. So that would be the actor that is interacting with the use case. So in this case, the customer. The uses or includes indicates uh, what use cases are included. So in this case, is login account. Because login has to happen before a meal can be ordered. Whether or not there are any extend relationships, well, uh, the only extend relationships in this diagram are between, are related to payment. So in this case, uh, nil, or simply leave it empty. Okay, any conditions that need to be true? Well, this really could be anything. Um, but what might be relevant in this case is to say, uh, meal information is available in the system because without that information it's going to be extremely hard to order a meal okay and then we basically can start the uh, main basic scenario steps um, again I'm always making this up as I go along so it may not be the most perfect scenario but I hope nonetheless it gives you an idea okay so I may want to start with uh, the system retrieving the meals and display system retrieves let's be a little bit more proactive in our language retrieves the meals and displays them to the customer the customer after that selects a meal in the end indicates the quantity after that the customer adds the meal to the cart all right um, after that the system oh let's do that in a moment uh, the system updates the cart Okay, so basically, uh, step two through four, basically deal with adding meals to a cart. And since we may want to add multiple meals to the cart, I'm going to add the fifth step. Uh, steps two till four are repeated until all meals are selected. Okay, then after that, step number seven, the customer proceeds to checkout. And to facilitate the checkout, system displays the cart overview on screen. So that would typically be the last step because after this, the uh, payment process will start. So elaborating on this uh, let's do the error condition first what can go wrong so what can for example go wrong is if a meal is not available so typically I would like my system to check whether or not a meal is available so I would typically do that um, upon updating the cart so let's say step 4.1 system checks if meal is available if available system updates the cart okay then the obvious question that comes about is what are we going to do if the meal is not available so in that case it would be uh, alternative step 4.2 in error conditions if meal is not available a error message or no, that doesn't have to be an error message the customer is notified the meal is not available and then after that the process can just repeat because they can select a different meal okay so that is basically error conditions so now to talk about other scenarios those are essentially alternative paths through the system that require a slightly different 
set of steps. So in this case, I'm going to expand the use case scenario in a way that is may not be ideal from a functional point of view. But again, I'm doing a quick example here. So say that we do not just have meals that can be selected. We have so-called a la carte meals and set meals. So the system would first prompt the customer to choose between a la carte meals and set meals. So then the follow-up step would be customer indicates a la carte meal. So after that the next step would be system retrieves the uh, a la carte meals and displays them to the customer. So the customer would then select the meal, add the meal to the cart. The system will check if the meal is available. If available, update the cart. Steps are repeated. Customer proceeds to check out. Overview is shown. And naturally, I have to update the error condition step as well because it's now 6.2. Okay, so basically, <coughs> basically from step 2 onwards, it can branch off in a different scenario. So in this case I can say uh, 2.1 uh, or since they serve as replacement steps I think I'll just stick with 2. Um, customer indicates to indicates uh, set meal. So after that the system and since I'm kind of lazy, I'm just going to copy it. System retrieves the set meals and displays them to the customer. And then the next step would be uh, completely the same. So I can actually go back to step number four. Customer selects a meal, indicates the quantity. Customer selects the meal, adds the meal to the cart. System checks is available. If available, update the cart or the error condition applies. Only thing is that since the customer has to indicate the one to set or a la carte meal, after this, we have to go back to step number one, and then the scenario is correct again. Okay, lastly, uh, post conditions. So a typical post condition would be, after this whole scenario is done, order is composed. I'm not using the word stored because it's not stored in the database yet. I only want to do that after payment, which is another use case. Order is composed and ready for payment. So then typically the next use case can take it from there. All right, so let's recap our use case scenario. I have the use case name, which is uh, order a meal, the author, last revision, the actors, which is the customer, uh, the include relationship, there's no extents. Uh, I've set the fact that meal information must be available as the precondition, and then the basic steps, uh, from which case step one, can step two, can branch off into an alternative scenario up until step 3, after which step 4 will continue the rest of the scenario. Moreover, uh, step 6.2 can result in an error condition, which is defined here, because a meal can be available or not available. Okay, so I hope this video was useful for you, and see you next time.